Okay, good afternoon. Calling this House Consumer Protection and Commerce Committee meeting uh, this March 16th, Tuesday at 2 p.m. to order in room 329 here at the Capitol. Uh, my thanks to everyone for joining us today. We have several measures, several Senate bills um, that we will be considering. Uh, first off, uh, if this is your first time joining us in the Consumer Protection and Commerce uh, Committee, I wanted to go over a few ground rules that will help um, to facilitate today's hearing. One, uh, first and foremost, we ask that everyone extend each other uh, courtesy and aloha. Uh, two, there is a two minute time limit, uh, which we will be enforcing. So when uh, your time has expired, I will end up asking you to please summarize your point. And if at that time you can start to summarize, that would be very helpful. Um, and three, if you can keep yourself muted, unless you are called upon to testify, that will help for everyone being able uh, to better hear today's proceedings. So again, my thanks to everyone for their cooperation in advance. First off, we have SB 320. This is relating to tax return preparers, and this would require uh, each tax return preparer to have a valid preparer tax um, identification number issued by the IRS when they are um, being compensated for tax preparation. It also establishes penalties for non-compliance. Uh, let's see. First off, we have the Department of Taxation in support. Aloha Chair Johansson, Vice Chair Kitagawa, members of the committee, Titin Sakata on behalf of Director Choi, we stand on our written testimony in support of this bill. I'm available to answer questions. Thank you. Thank you. We also have the Tax Foundation of Hawaii offering comments. Uh, thank you, Chair and members. Tom Yamachika from the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. Uh, we've submitted written comments, but the basic upshot is uh, that the Internal Revenue Code really establishes no professional constraints on who may act as a tax return preparer. Uh, preparers range from uncredentialed persons to attorneys and CPAs. Uh, the, PT, the P10 is just a registration number and can be issued to anybody who wants one. And uh, we're just concerned uh, that, uh, you know, some may mistakenly think that those with P10s are smarter or more reliable than others and we may not want to give the public the impression that they are. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Tom. Um, that's all the testimony we have proffered on this measure. Members, any questions on SB 320? Uh, okay, seeing no questions, um, I just have a few. Um, uh, for the Department of Taxation, uh, the Tax Foundation of Hawaii referenced um, various federal cases in their uh, testimony which um, regulates whether the IRS can impose continuing education requirements um, or licensing or testing fees um, uh, on this particular profession. And I was wondering if you knew Department of Taxation whether or not those cases are also applicable in state law um, for say like the state of Hawaii as opposed to the IRS, particularly with respect to continuing education requirements. Oh, um, Chair Johansson, um, I'll have to look more into the case law of um, that's referred by the Tax Foundation. Um, we right now, we, um, the tax preparers are not regulated at all, and we we believe that this bill. Um, requiring a uh, PTIN for a tax preparer for anybody that uh, get compensated to prepare returns uh, would be a good um, a step to what to um, regulating some sort of regu regulation to um, tax preparation. But we'll look into a tax foundation's um, testimony and on the cases that they provided. Okay. Thank you. And then also, um, sorry, Tintin, one more question. Um, in the bill, it references um, that the director can waive the penalties if the return preparer shows the violation was due to reasonable cause. Is reasonable cause um, defined elsewhere in tax statutes or, you know, or does the department have a definition for that? 
such that if someone is pursuing this recourse? I believe there are um, some some um, case law or um, the reasonable cause. It's it's um, it's a tax. There's a tax term for it, but I can I, we can look into it and get back to you. Yeah, if you would, that would be terrific. Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you, uh, members. Any other questions? Okay, I'm um, seeing none. Then we'll move on to our next agenda item. SB 513, this is relating to the enforcement of laws, uh, and this is a different approach um, and quite an inventive one about um, how to engender better fireworks um, compliance with fireworks laws. Um, it raises different fees uh, and violation penalties, as well as um, uh, creates additional resources for the enforcement through uh, both the Attorney General's office, as well as the Department of Public Safety and the Sheriff's. Um, uh, let's see, although we have proffered testimony all in support, um, no one has indicated that they will be present to testify on this measure. Supporters uh, include the Hawaii State Fire Council, Hawaiian Humane Society, um, and individual testimony in support. Um, so members, unfortunately, we don't have anyone uh, in today's hearing to ask questions to. Um, uh, with that, then we'll move on from SB 513 um, to SB 1100, uh, and this is an administration bill, uh, which we did not hear the House companion of, uh, and this is relating to insurance data security. It adopts the National Conference of Insurance Commissioners insurance data security model to establish insurance data security standards for Hawaii insurance license ease. On SB 1100, we have um, Commissioner Hayashida with the Insurance Division. Good afternoon, uh, Chair Johansson, Vice Chair Kitagawa, members of the committee. <clears throat> the department uh, stands on its written testimony in support of this administration bill and requests an amendment. Our amendment is also located in our written testimony. Uh, we thank you for the opportunity to testify and I'll be available for any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Uh, we also have Oren Chikamoto with the American Council of Life Insurers. Comment? Yes. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, you have my written testimony and we've also requested an amendment to the bill, uh, which is set forth in our testimony. So to the extent the chair or any members of the committee have any questions or concerns about it, I'd be glad to answer it. Thank you. Thank you. Members, please note that that's all the testimony we have um, on this administration measure SB 1100. Members, any questions on this measure? Okay, uh, seeing none, then we'll move on to our next agenda item. Uh, also administration bill SB 1096. Uh, and this is uh, also relating to insurance uh, and makes various amendments throughout the code. Um, let's see. I will note uh, members that we heard a substantially similar bill and passed it out. It was the House Companion HB 942, but because the Senate bill was crossing over first, uh, this bill was not heard in finance. Um, First off, on SB 1096, uh, we also have, again, Commissioner Hayashida with the Insurance Division of PCCA in support. Thank you, Chair. Um, the department stands on its written testimony in support of this administration bill, and I will be available for any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we have uh, the American Insurance Group, AIG Inc., Blake Oshiro in support. Good afternoon, Chair, members of the committee, Blake Oshiro on behalf of AIG. Um, we're in support of the bill, but we have a proposed amendment which we would like the committee to consider. It is addressing the standard non-foreclosure or non-forfeiture law, um, the individual annuity section 
Um, this is based off of a change in the model NAIC. Uh, the interest rate they have suggested to go down from the minimum of 1% to a 0.15%. And so we have proposed a suggested amendment which would conform with what the NAIC has already recommended at the end of 2020. Um, I would note that um, in my written testimony, um, the suggested language is incorrect. Um, I had put 1 15th of 1% when it's actually supposed to be 15th 100 of 1%. Um, and that is what I believe um, ACLI and Mr. Chikamoto have already provided in the written testimony. And so we would agree um, with their version of how to address this issue. I'll be available for any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we also have uh, Oren Chikamoto with the American Council of Life Insurers with comments. Thank you, Chair. Um, we strongly support the uh, proposed amendment that AIG has submitted to the committee. Uh, um, subject with the uh, minor, not minor, but the correction that's noted in my testimony. Uh, all in all, again, we strongly support this legislation and urge this committee to pass it as amended. Thank you. Thank you. Members, please note that uh, in addition to those testifiers indicating that they would be present today, we also have uh, supportive testimony from uh, various other organizations and businesses. Uh, with that, members, any questions on SB 1096? Okay, seeing none, then we'll move on to our next agenda item, SB 1098. This is relating to the regulatory authority of the insurance commissioner. This is also substantially similar to the House Companion we heard, HB 944, which also passed out of our committee, but um, the Senate had some easier referrals, so they were faster than we were. So. Mm -hmm. Finance never uh, took up this bill after it left CPC. Um, SB 1098 uh, adopts uh, certain provisions of the National Model uh, Association of Insurance Commissioners and Producers Licensing Model Act, um, in addition to various other um, significant amendments to bring us up to comport with the national model. On SB 1098, uh, we have our single and only testifier, Commissioner Hayashida, the Insurance Division. Thank you, Chair. Um, the department stands on its uh, written testimony in support of this administration bill, and I'll be available for any questions. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. Members, any questions on SB 1098? Okay. Uh, seeing none, then we'll move on to our next agenda item, SB 1102. This is relating to mixed martial arts. This is also an administration bill. Um, the House did not hear uh, the companion measures. Uh, this mixed martial arts bill would allow promoters to pay fighters with cash as opposed to just the present statutory cashier's check. Uh, on SB 1102, we have our single and only testifier Alan Taniguchi with the Professional and Vocational Licensing Division of DCCA. Afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Alan Taniguchi, Executive Officer for the MMA program. The department stands on its testimony in support of this administration bill. I'm more than happy to answer any questions the committee may have. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alan. Members, any questions on SB 1102? Exciting purview and CPC. <laughs> we have never a dull moment here. Um, seeing, no, seeing no questions, then we'll move on to our next agenda item, SB 1103, also an administration bill for which I did not hear the House Companion. Uh, this is relating to peer, uh, peer Review Oversight Commission, specifically for uh, the Board of Public Accountancy. It would be clarifying the roles and making some changes. Uh, on SB 1103, we have our single and only testifier in support. We have Relly Araceli uh, uh, with the PBL um, Board of Accountancy at DCCA. Afternoon, Chair, uh, committees of the, I mean, sorry, members of the committee. Relly Araceli, Executive Officer for the Board of Public Accountancy for the State of Hawaii. The board will stand on its testimony in support of this administration bill, just noting that this clarifies, or it gives the board some flexibility in appointing the peer review oversight committee members for them. 
thank you. Oh, and I'm here for questions. <laughs> thank you, Relly. Um, members, that's the only testifier we have on this measure. Any questions? Okay, if not, uh, real quickly, Relly, I just wanted to ask, ostensibly, I, I know this makes it easier for you folks, so I assume the answer is yes, but I just wanna be sure because we're changing um, uh, some of the verbiage for the qualifications, are there an abundance of partners um, and equivalent level of folks um, since that's what the bill changes to? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. okay, great. Thank you. Members, any other questions on SB 1103? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to our last agenda item today, SB 1104. Uh, this is also an administration bill for which I did not hear uh, the House companion. This is relating to the contractor's recovery fund. It increases the monetary amount of injured homo that an um, excuse me, that an injured homeowner may recover from the contractor's recovery fund. Uh, on this measure, first off, we have Candice Ito with the contractor's um, licensing board. Aloha, Chair Johansson and Vice Chair Kitagawa and members of the committee. I'm Candice Ito. I'm the executive officer of the Contractors License Board, and the board supports this administration bill because it does um, help homeowners who are injured by a transaction or conduct of licensed contractors. It helps them to defray some of the financial losses that they uh, occurred. And um, we know that some of the um, other testifiers have concerns regarding the special assessment in the um, recovery fund statute. So um, there was one special assessment of $50 that was made in 1995. And that's the only assessment that was made. And was, it was only made upon the contracting entities. So, so I'm here for any questions, if you have any. Uh, thank you, Candace. We also have Tim Lyons with the Subcontractors Association of Hawaii in opposition. Yes, Mr. Chairman, we're here. Um, we, we filed our written, our written testimony and we'll stand by that, but we will uh, be available if there's any further follow-up. Okay, uh, thank you. Members, please note that that's the extent of our proffered testimony on this measure, SB 1104. Members, any questions on this measure? Okay, um, seeing none, then um, if I might, um, Candace, if I can just ask you really quickly, um, uh, I, I completely agree with uh, uh, the spirit of the bill. I just wanted to ask if, um, if what a consumer can recover is increased, um, does this at all change um, what's levied on the contractors? And if not, uh, is, are, is the board at all concerned about um, a faster depletion rate of the fund. Okay, so um, there is a process to making a claim on the recovery fund. So one is that the consumer or homeowner must get a judgment from the court, and um, this increase. Um, and so, and the other thing is before they can make a claim on the fund, they need to show that they've exhausted all avenues to try to collect the judgment from the contractor. So if they do um, exhaust all the avenues and they can't um, get, you know, find any um, money from the contractor, then, you know, they make a request to the board and we can make a payout from the fund then the contractor's license is um, revoked and they can't get their license back until they start paying back the money that was paid out of the fund. Um, so it's not really a, and this only affects licensed contractors. So it's not really like you just make a request and you can get a payout. So there is a process to it. But that's how you also offset what would be a larger potentially accrued loss to the fund is because the contractor ends up having to pay uh, to replenish. Yes, and then when they, you know, request to get their license back, they have to pay um, what was um, paid out plus interest. Okay. 
Okay, that's very helpful. Thank you very much. Members, any other questions on SB 1104? Okay, uh, seeing none, then we will recess for decision making. Recess.
Okay, reconvening our 2 p.m. decision making, uh, uh, excuse me, reconvening our decision making for our 2 p.m. agenda of the Consumer Protection and Commerce Committee. First off on SB 320 relating to tax return preparers. The recommendation here um, is to insert clarifying language to make abundantly clear that this um, new regulation is applicable only to compensated tax uh, return preparers, uh, not to those people who um, are just doing it either for themselves or for their family members, but not receiving any compensation. Additionally, um, I would also like to put in um, a continuing education requirement to explore again, how best to service uh, consumers uh, in a safe and qualified manner. The continuing education requirement um, will comport with, since this is new, um, the lowest continuing education requirement in the country, which is four hours. Um, uh, and we'll be inserting a defective date of January 1, 2050. Also noting in the committee report that if approved, the penalties would need to be effective January 1, 2022, um, uh, in addition to some other technical and non-substantive amendments. Uh, members, any comments or questions? Okay, uh, seeing none then, Vice Chair for the vote, please. The recommendation of the chair is to pass SB 320 with amendments. Chair and Vice Chair vote aye. Representative Aquino. Representative Har. Aye. Representative Hashem. Aye. Representative Kong is excused. Representative Mizuno. Representative Morikawa. Aye. Representative Onishi. Aye. Representative Tarnas. Aye. Representative Matsumoto. Aye. Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members. Next, we have SB 513 relating to the enforcement of laws. Um, uh, I would like to amend this measure um, and pass it out. I'd like to retain um, all of what is presently in here. It already has a defective date. Uh, let me make sure the appropriations are blank. Excuse me one minute. <laughs> Okay, the appropriation section is already blank. Um, but what I would like to do, because I think it's appropriate in this uh, enforcement of laws, uh, this Senate vehicle is markedly different than what uh, we advanced in the House. And I think that's actually helpful in this case to give us uh, an assortment of options. I would also like to add um, in this uh, SB 513, an additional new part. Um, so in addition to what's there, uh, adding also the contents of or HB 1245, which was creating a new adjudication structure, uh, potentially uh, if we wanted to assess this uh, similar to speeding tickets and deal with it in the same uh, manner um, from a judicial standpoint. In addition, I'd like to add technical and non-substantive amendments. This is being done primarily, uh, we did pass this HB 1245 uh, out of the House and into the Senate, but this is being done to ensure that we're considering a range of options in terms of enforcement. Uh, members, any comments or questions on the recommendation? Okay, thank you. Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote, please. The recommendation of the Chair is to pass SB 513 SB1 with amendments, noting the excused absence of Representative Kong, who will be noted excused for the rest of this agenda. Are there any reservations? Any no's? Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. Next members on SB 1100 uh, relating to insurance data security, I would like to accept uh, and amend this measure by taking DCCA's uh, suggested amendment. Uh, it already has a defective date, so that would be uh, the one amendment made to SB 1100. Members, any comments or questions? Okay, seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote, please. The recommendation of the chair is to pass SB 1100 SB1 with amendments. Are there any reservations? Any no's? Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. On this next administration measure, members also would like to pass uh, SB 1096 with amendments. I would like to um, uh, take AIG's amendment, but also with the appropriate uh, 
figure, which is noted in the American Council of Life Insurers testimony. Uh, so uh, including this standard non-forfeiture law on individual annuities language. Uh, and then in the sub point three, it should now read in our amended version where the resulting interest rate is not less than 15 hundredth of 1% um, instead of what is in ANG's testimony. And members, this is also consistent with what is in the ACLI's testimony. Uh, in addition to that, I would also uh, like to add in a defective date of January 1, 2015 uh, and make technical and non-substantive amendments. Members, any comments or questions on the recommendation? Okay, thank you. Seeing none, Vice Chair, please. The recommendation of the chair is to pass SB 1096 SD1 with amendments. Are there any reservations? Any no's? Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. Next on SB 1098 relating to the regulatory authority, authority of the insurance commissioner. The recommendation here is to insert a defective date of January 1, 2050 uh, and uh, include various technical and non-sensitive amendments. Members, any comments or questions on the recommendation? Okay, seeing none, Vice Chair. Recommendation of the chair is to pass SB 1098 SD1 with amendments. Are there any reservations? Any no's? Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. Next, SB 1102 relating to mixed martial arts. Uh, recommendation here would also be uh, simply to defect the date. And uh, I was remiss in not explaining this earlier. If someone is watching for the first time in this hearing, the reason that the legislature inserts a defective date is to ensure that we have to have continued discussion on the bill because it can't become effective immediately if both chambers were to pass it. So on SB 1102, inserting a defective date of January 1, 2050 and making various technical and non-substantive amendments. Members, any comments or questions on the recommendation? Okay, seeing none, Vice Chair. The recommendation of the chair is to pass SB 1102 with amendments. Are there any reservations? Any no's? Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. Next on SB 1103 relating to the Peer Review Oversight Committee. Recommendation here also um, is to insert a defective date of January 1, 2015. Members, any comments or questions? Okay, seeing none. Vice Chair, please. The recommendation of the chair is to pass SB 1103 with amendments. Are there any reservations? Any no's? Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. And lastly, on SB 1104 relating to the Contractors Recovery Fund, uh, the recommendation here would also be to insert a defective date of January 1, 2050 and include various technical and non-substantive amendments. Members, any comments or questions on the recommendation? Okay. Uh, seeing on Vice Chair for the vote, please. The recommendation of the chair is to pass SB 1104 with amendments. Are there any reservations? Any no's? Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Okay, my thanks to members of the public and to members of the committee. This uh, meeting is adjourned.